there is a tendency when something bad happens to you to wonder, what did I do to deserve this? I have never, ever heard that from Aunt Shirley. But I, you know what I have heard? When I lost my brother, she, <laughs> among the things she said to me was, I would have hoped that God would have looked at our family and said, Shirley has given enough. I'm not taking anything more from this family. There are two words they should say. I'm sorry. And not like so many say, I know, I know. They don't know unless they've gone through it. And hopefully, they should never know. He was 28, I was 20. He uh, was my brother Irv's best friend. So I knew him really all my life and hated him. And uh, he's the one I fell in love with and married. I was absolutely crazy about him and it was mutual. And uh, just unfortunately, we didn't have enough time together. I lost my first child when I was 21. They called in some specialists. They could not expand the mucus out of her lungs, expand her lungs and uh, remove the mucus. And uh, she uh, just couldn't live. When I was 22, I had my first son. And uh, I lost him when I was 31. We just stayed on the bridge till they found Jeff, and then we had to walk down the side of the canal to where they'd found him and had removed him from the canal. I asked God, I said, as I stood on the canal, dear God, I'm not going to ask for much. I ask, please, let them find them before dark. And please, God, give me the strength to see this thing through, too. I remarried a couple of years after my husband passed away. And then when my youngest was 18, Martin, my husband, was in Chicago on business. I was uh, sound asleep, and uh, Elsie heard the door. And uh, she came into the bedroom and awakened me and said, uh, Mrs. Mr. Jacobs, Jacobs, there's, there's a policeman at the door, door and, and I really think you need to come and talk to him. And I jumped out of bed and was just snapping my house coat going down the hall and the officer was standing there and he said uh, do you have a son Carrie Cooper well he was just killed in an automobile accident I was still walking down the hall no please sit down or there's been an accident or that's the way I got it I said uh, I don't want to see Carrie. I want to remember how he looks when he kissed me goodnight to go out and pick up his date. And I said, and I don't want the casket to be open. We we're both sitting on our bed up against our uh, backrest with pillows. And he got up and walked toward the end of the, the foot of the bed. And I said, honey, and that's all I got out of my mouth. And he fell over and 
onto the floor and hit his head. And I ran to him and said, honey, honey, and there was no response. And I called 911. And uh, they took him to the hospital, and uh, of course he was pronounced dead. So I had just my middle son and and he passed away when he was 47 years old. And so I am the only surviving member of my immediate family. There's the shock of death which is very difficult. And uh, then it's realization. And then the hard part comes, and the hard part is learning to live with it. It's almost indescribable. That's got to be the worst feeling in your life, to lose one child, let alone all four. I don't know how she does it. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd shut the door and never want to go outside again, being afraid that, you know, I was going to lose somebody else. That way, you know, if, if you don't go outside, you're not going to find out. If you don't have any contact with the outside world, you're not going to find out that someone else you love has died. Someone else that means something to you has, has gone away. It wasn't, uh, what am I going to do? Uh, what this has done to me. With my boys, I felt, particularly with Jeff and with Carrie, because they were so young, they didn't get a chance. And I felt for my boys. Uh, I also remember thinking uh, when Jeff drowned that my husband, Irv, felt just as badly as I did and so, therefore, I had to try to feel if I could give him strength or if I could be strong enough to help him. In other words, if one thinks about someone else before they think of themselves, it might help them, too. I did a great deal of talking to myself. In the mirror, I would say to myself, so-and-so, they're going out tonight. To have a good time and you deserve a good time too so just leave it all here it'll all be here waiting for you when you get home she has made a decision she's thought about this this isn't something that came lightly it wasn't a natural reaction for her to move onward and upward through her life she's thought about it she's made the decision and as any of us do when we make a decision that's really important to us. We do everything we can to turn that decision into action. Well, she's succeeded. I am a human being. And I made up my mind a long time ago that I wanted to get as much out of and enjoy life as much as I could. To be any guy off the street to look at her would look at a frail old lady and not think twice about it, you know? But to do that would really show her more respect and as to what she's been through in her life. And I bribed her. for that, I mean, just knowing her for the short time that I have makes me a stronger person myself. You know, to know that people out there have that kind of ability and that kind of strength to persevere and to go on after something like that, you know. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I just think it's incredible. I would never be able to do something like mm -hmm. that in my life. I would have broke down. I would have been a babbling idiot. Yeah, by exactly. Time. Me I, too. I'm a wuss. When it comes to losing people, man, I just, I can't do it, man. And she's just, she's like she's a brick. She's lost everybody. Except for brother, her brothers, sisters, and us. She's like the third little pig in the little brick house, man. <laughs> she ain't gonna break down. <laughs> the tendons in my legs, because of wearing high heels for so many years, and they they had shrunken. I never ever see her that she's not wearing high heels. I've asked her about it. 
Oh, goodness, she said, I, I'm not going to change what I wear just because my legs don't work right anymore. And she certainly doesn't look like she's carrying the burden she is uh, through her life, but there's no question in anyone's mind that knows her that she is. I'm telling you, something is holding her up, and I, I know she's part of it, but I really believe... Well, no, the wall's not holding her up. She's holding up the wall. <laughs> You know, the, you walls, know the wall is going to fall before she does, definitely. And that's and the other thing is, you know, she's still kept her faith. Yeah. You know, she really has. You know. I have been surprised at times that I still have faith. Now, as far as saying to someone or saying to myself, well, it's God's will, that's not good enough. That's no answer. Like when my son Doug said, you know, um, how come we have to have so much sickness and so many funerals in our family? What was I going to say? It's God's will? That's an answer? No. I haven't found one. Long ago, I asked her, before I lost my brother, I asked her, how do you do this? I want to know. You're a role model for me, my kids, everyone in our family. And she said in her inimitable way, son, it's your choice. And I choose to thank God for the blessings I've been given rather than dwell on the things that have been taken away. I think that I am a very fortunate and lucky individual in many, many ways. Can I have a kiss? And, uh, May I have a kiss, please? I thank God, I thank my family, my friends, and uh, I hope I will continue in good health. And there's a saying in Yiddish, you should live and be well, there's a hundred and twenty cure. You should live and be well until 120 years old. So I'm on my way. When it's over, when the smoke clears, I'll be standing When the last card's been dealt from this deck When the last shot's been fired through the haze of this mess I'll be ready for what I've come to expect So deal it out, deal it out